We have here the case of Airborne Maintenance and Allied Services Inc. versus Egos, which discusses principles relating to constructive dismissal in relation to employees placed on floating status. On the 9th of April 1992, Airborne, a company engaged in providing manpower services to various clients, hired the services of Arnulfo as janitor. He was assigned at a branch office of one of its clients. Almost 20 years thereafter, or on the 30th of June 2011, the contract between Airborne and the client expired. The client entered into a new contract with another manpower service provider, which absorbed employees of Airborne except Arnulfo who allegedly had a heart ailment. Arnulfo consulted a doctor who declared that he was in good health and fit to work. He presented a medical certificate to Airborne, but the latter disregarded the same. He also reported for work, but Airborne told him that no work was available for him. Feeling aggrieved, Arnulfo filed a complaint for constructive dismissal on the 5th of August 2011. Airborne contended that Arnulfo was never dismissed from service because when its contract with the client ceased, it directed all of its employees, including Arnulfo, to report to its office for reposting. When Arnulfo failed to do so, it sent two letters dated the 12th of August 2011 and the 21st of September 2011 at Arnulfo's last known address, directing him to report to his new assignment at a different branch of the client. And said letters, however, were returned to the sender with a notation RTS are known. Arnulfo asserted that he was constructively dismissed by Airborne. He pointed out that he made several follow-ups since the 1st of July 2011, but Airborne ignored him. He was not given a new assignment since then. The letters were products of afterthought since Airborne was already aware of the constructive dismissal complaint prior to the sending of the said letters. The said letters could not possibly reach him because his address stated therein was incomplete. Arnulfo posits that such mistake was intentionally done for him not to receive the letters and he left his cell phone number with an administrative officer of Airborne but never received a call from the latter. Was Arnulfo constructively dismissed from employment? The Supreme Court ruled that Arnulfo was constructively dismissed from employment. Jurisprudence dictates that constructive dismissal is a dismissal in disguise as it is an act amounting to dismissal but made to appear as if it were not. Here, the court found that Airborne denied Arnulfo his employment because he had a heart ailment. Despite the declaration that he was fit to work, Airborne still did not give him any assignment. To give semblance of legality to their act of not giving him an assignment, Airborne sent him two letters with an incomplete address after the filing of the constructive dismissal complaint. The sending of the letters according to the court, were products of afterthought. The court said that an afterthought cannot be given weight or credibility. The court was not convinced of Airborne's sincerity to give him a new assignment for there was reason to believe that the incomplete address was intentionally done so that Arnulfo would not receive it and Airborne can thus set up the defense that it had the intention to have the complainant reposted by sending the letters. On Airborne's claim that Arnulfo was only placed on floating status under Article 301 of the Labor Code of the Philippines, jurisprudence dictates that the employer must prove the existence of a clear and compelling economic reason for the temporary shutdown of its business or undertaking and that there were no available posts to which the affected employee could be assigned. And it should notify the Department of Labor and Employment and the affected employee at least one month prior to the intended date of suspension of business operations. Here, the court found that Airborne failed to prove that the termination of the contract with the client resulted in a bona fide suspension of its business operations so as to validly place Arnulfo in floating status. Airborne did not show that after the termination of its contract with the client, it was faced with a clear and compelling economic reason to temporarily shut down its operations or a particular undertaking. It also failed to show that there were no available posts to which Arnulfo could be assigned. Airborne also failed to show compliance with the notice requirement to the Department of Labor and Employment and to Arnulfo. According to the court, the totality of the foregoing circumstances, specifically Airborne's failure to prove the bona fide suspension of its business or undertaking, failure to inform the Department of Labor and Employment, as well as Arnulfo of the suspension of its operations, act of ignoring Arnulfo's follow-ups on a new assignment, and the belated sending of letters or notices which were returned to it were done to make it appear as if Arnulfo had not been dismissed. Such acts, however, clearly amounted to a dismissal 
for which airborne should be liable.